Hey guys, it's Andrew from SimuAppT and today we're going to look at a really cool programming concept called hashing maps and how they are actually used by dictionaries in Swift and how efficient they can be when looking up certain values. So let's jump right into it. So let's take a look at hash maps and dictionaries in Swift. So we have a key value pair here and the key SID refers to Sydney, SFO refers to San Francisco, HKG refers to Hong Kong and Sing refers to Singapore. Now the most important thing to note about hash maps is they aren't always in the same order like an array where you have items 1 to 10 and once you place them in they'll be in the same order every time you treat them. Hash maps are actually always mixed up and we'll see why this is the case soon. So you can't rely on a certain position of an item in a hash map to retrieve it. You need to rely on a key or to loop through the whole thing if you want to find a particular value whereby you do not have the key. So this is the code in Swift for this dictionary, which is a hash map structure. So we can see we've got their airports, which is a dictionary type of string to string. The left side here is a key, the value on the right side, so they're both a string data type. And likewise, the structure in here, SID is Sydney, SFO is San Francisco, and so on. So like I mentioned, they're already not in order. And dictionaries, which are a hash map data structure, have a very fast lookup time. So if you look up the key SFO, that will return San Francisco straight away without having to go through all the other items, which we'll also see the reason for this soon. So let's take a look at how hash maps actually work. What we're going to do, on the right here, we have some Swift code. We've got a dictionary called letter name and a series of key value pairs where the letter name A equals Andrew, D equals Dave, C equals Claire, and so on. So in the middle of the key and value, we have this hashing function, and that determines where to store the actual value based on the key. And this hash hashing function is a mathematical function. In our example here, in the bottom left, we can say A equals 1, B equals 2, C equals 3, and so on. So we're going to assign these numbers to determine the position of our key value pairs. So for example, the letter A for Andrew, the key A, goes through this hashing function here. The hashing function we have A is equal to position 1, so it places Andrew in position 1. If we go to the next item, we place a key D, and D relates to position 4 here, which the value is Dave. The letter name C is Claire, so C is in position 3, so if we add that, it gets added into position 3 as follows. As you can see, we have an empty spot here because we haven't placed any values in it. This is in position 2 for the letter B if we had a key with B. So, if you want to replace a value, you use a let key A and that's going to replace Andrew with something else. So, if we say letter name A is equal to Abe, that's going to replace Andrew with Abe because you can't have the same key hold one or more values. It has to be unique. Now, let's take a look at problem with hash maps. Say we have the letter name A in uppercase, and our hashing function for A in uppercase is also one, B in uppercase is two, and so on. So we're going to say the letter name in uppercase A is different to the letter name in lowercase a. They're two distinct values, but the hashing function sets them both to be in position 1. So we can add this letter name uppercase A, called aria, without replacing Abe. And this here is meant to be Andrew. So what do you think is going to happen? 
I'm going to show you two options that hashing maps usually take to take care of a hashing function conflict where something goes through this hashing function and it tries to place it in the same spot as something else. The first one is if we place the key A, it gets associated with the value A position, but it then creates an array from here. So after A, we have ARIA for the capital letter A or uppercase. So if we want to retrieve ARIA, we do letter name, square brackets A, and that's going to go to this chain here and find ARIA in our array. The second option is we move ARIA to the next free space in our value values here. So that can be next to A, either after or before. And the hashing function will make a special note of any items that have been bumped off to the left or right. So it can then retrieve them later by using the letter name A. So what happens usually with this hashing function is it's a black box. We don't know how it works. It's all magical and you don't need to worry about it. So in the bottom left, that was an example of how our hashing map might work. In reality, the hashing function is created already for you with dictionaries and other data structures. You rarely have to code from scratch. It's just good to know how it works. So hash maps have very fast lookup time. They are not in order and won't always be in the same order you place items in. So don't count on that. The hashing function is mathematical and made by very smart people. So you'll very rarely need to recreate it as I mentioned. And if you do, there's a lot of examples out there for quick and efficient hash maps. The most important point is it takes up more space in array. However, this is rarely a concern because the trade-off is worth it. Because the lookup time, if you say, I want to get the letter D key value, it will go straight and get Dave straight away within a second. It won't need to go through the whole key value pairs of all the items. So example, if you had an array of 100 names and you're looking up Dave, you need to loop through the array until you find Dave. With a dictionary, which uses a hash map, if you know the key D is equal to Dave, you can go, hey, hashing function, I'm gonna give you the key D, and it's going to go, the value for D is Dave, and return that straight away without going through the whole dictionary. All right, now we've seen how hashing maps work and the real power of them. I myself think hashing maps are one of the most fascinating data structures simply because if you know the key, you can get a value out of it straight away, no matter how big the hashing map is, you can return the value pretty much instantly. So it just kind of blows my mind that something that simple can be so elegant. So going forward, keep this in mind when you're using dictionaries and you need a large data structure if you're able to implement hashing maps. So one example might be a database. If you know an ID, you might be able to grab all the values straight away from it, just as a quick example.